Welcome back to the Dry Fire Journal. This is day 101. And if you haven't checked out ksgarmory.com, check them out. Uh, I'm, I'm using a KSG Armory holster right now. Granted, it's kind of a one-off custom thing, uh, but you need to go check out KSG Armory. And when you go to ksgarmory.com, you get 15% off your holster when you enter the code REDHAWK at checkout. So go look at that and go see what's up. So today we're going to do a little bit of circuit training. I, as if you watched yesterday, I told you the reasons why I'm reverting back, not reverting, but switching back to my first love, the HK Mark 23, affectionately known as Alice. And uh, today I'm going to do a little circuit training with this firearm. Here's what I mean by circuit training. I'm going to work on trigger and draw, but do them separately. So I have spent a lot of time on the 365 XL. I have spent a little bit of time in the last few days on the P30L, and today I'm going to start re-familiarizing myself with the draw stroke of uh, the Mark 23. So obviously it's a much larger gun, much heavier gun, and so that's going to, I believe, uh, make my, my draw time just a little bit slower. I'm also readjusting to a lot of weight coming out of the holster, which means I have to overthink a little bit, just a little bit, about my coast more than normal. And then I'm going to do some trigger work, and I encourage you to consider doing a little bit of circuit training as you do your dry fire. It's so tempting sometimes to think, hey, I'm going to work on this one thing and this one thing only. But here's something you can do to give yourself two different improvements, and it doesn't have to take a ton of time. So I'm going to give myself 10 draws to first shot. Uh, I do have my barrel block in my Mark 23 and nothing in the, well, let me show you that, nothing in the magazine well. And uh, just want you to know that safety is always, always super important. Uh, I'm going to do 10 draws to first shot, and then I'm going to give myself 20 trigger presses in double action mode, uh, which is a 12-pound double action trigger. So just an idea on circuit training. You can accomplish this with a dead trigger on your striker fire and just running the trigger as hard as you can. Or if you're in double single action, uh, just run double the entire time. Or if you have a single action only, engage your safety. Or if you have a striker fire with a safety, engage your safety and pretend like you can break the trigger through that wall and press that hard. We're working on trigger speed and dexterity and doing a little bit of overload work with our shooting hand. It also tests our grip, does a whole lot of things. So in a short span of time, you get a whole lot of work. So I have a part-time set to, I don't know if you can see that, but that is 0.9, and we're going to see what happens. Also, just so you know, this morning as I was cleaning my kitchen, we had a little food coloring accident, so pardon my uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rain Thumb here. But here we go, uh, 10 draws to first shot. I'm going to use just right here as my point of aim, and here we go. I threw it a little bit low. I'm gonna stay in double action mode and look my way all the way into the holster. I went all the way this way. <laughs> you know why? I was thinking about time, which is a really interesting thought and a good discovery for me. Now I just need to see. I didn't get a good grip on the gun See this low right here? Didn't like that at all. Let's try it again. I was late to get the gun out of the holster, but I saw everything I wanted to see. And that was interesting. Here's number five. Almost got there, saw what I needed to see. Staying in double action mode. Here's number seven. I slapped my hand onto the gun. Number nine. Pretty much got there. I didn't like how late my grip built out here. And I know better than that. 
Here's number 10. I felt myself roll this way to get my shirt up, which didn't need to happen. Now, after I've done my 10, I need to get one really right. So here we go. Now, 20 trigger presses, trying to keep my front sight motionless, but also running the trigger quickly. As I got to 20, I got tired. This is a great overload training for your trigger finger. And what enables your trigger finger to do this is a strong support hand grip. So I'm gonna try one more set of 20. <sighs> Oh, I'm getting tired. Okay, so why are we doing this? First, if I do 10 quickly at a part time that pushes me, I discover all the things I need to work on later today. Because as you may not know, when I dry fire, it goes well beyond what I film, uh, but also gives me an idea of what I want to work on tomorrow. Second, when I overload my trigger finger, I'm building up strength, which is eventually going to build up speed. And so that's why I'm trying to do all this work in a double action trigger. This is my own experiment. You can interpret this as you wish. I hope you find this idea of circuit training helpful, and I'll see you tomorrow.